Welcome back to the world of Juan. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI and more and more advancements are being made with the open source AI video model Juan 2.1. We're seeing all sorts of creative LoRa's that are being released that allow you to do all kinds of things that were normally reserved for apps that you would pay for. And now you can do them on your own. But among the latest of the toys they've given us are a couple of control LoRa's for use in programs like Comfy UI that allow us not only to easily change the style of any video Video, but also to upscale and add detail to any video, not just one that you created there in the platform. You can learn a little bit more about them at the Hugging Face page to give you more detail about the Tile Laura and the Depth Laura. The Tile Laura is what allows us to add all the detail, and the Depth Laura is what allows us to easily change the style. This is the Comfy UI workflow running over on our sponsor Mimic PC that did the opening of this video. We started with this input video here. The workflow extracted a depth map. I entered a detailed prompt, and this is what came out on the other side. Now this workflow with the control ORs is just one of many you can play with over at Mimic PC if you are so inclined, and that includes things like these that turn you into a baby, that make you fly, that turn you into a hitman, squish, and deflate, and all those things that you've seen. You can come over here and just run these workflows, use your own images, and just go and go and go, and pay only for the time that you're using the GPU, which is literally pennies for an hour. So this by far is a much more economical way to play with these types of effects and share them with people, particularly if you don't have a GPU of your own that will run these things. This particular workflow, in theory, I should be able to run on my system just fine, but there's a couple of custom nodes that for whatever reason I cannot get installed, and so I actually have to run it here on Mimic PC, but it's better anyway because the GPU is way faster and it takes all the workload off my computer. I've left a link to this particular workflow right here, and let me just give you a couple of hints. When you click the link, you're going to be presented with something that looks like this. I'm going to highly recommend that you use the Ultra GPU, whether you use the Bargain or the Instant is totally up to you. But the other thing I highly recommend is to scroll Scroll down a little bit and go under more options and click on automatic extension. This will make sure that the machine does not turn off in the middle of a process or while you're or if you've walked away for whatever reason and then you have to start the machine all over. You don't lose any work that was created but you know it's just a pain to start the whole thing over and if something was in process you would have to start that process over again. Once that's done you click create and start and wait just a couple of minutes while the machine is built and the software is loaded. Once it does you're going to get a couple of workflows. If you pop this open right here workflows you're going to see depth and tile right now we are in the depth workflow and that's the one that allows you to create these stylistic changes and truly just as I showed you it could not be Fine. simpler you choose any video Welcome. you want you drop it in here it creates the depth map and then it uses that depth map to guide the shape of what you prompt in this area here now this is a fairly detailed prompt and I'm gonna show you examples where I didn't do anything quite so complicated but in this case, I was going for something in particular. So I actually did an image to image process from me sitting in the studio here to create a cartoon stylized picture of Bigfoot in the studio. I brought that image and brought it into ChatGPT and had it describe the image as an image prompt in great detail. So I got this prompt and then that's what I plugged in here. But again, I could have just said Bigfoot sitting in the studio. I just wanted to see what would happen if I did this. Now, all of these settings here, you can basically leave at the default. This node here, the Wand Video Laura Select, is pretty much your denoise strength, like how strong the influence of this depth map is going to be. So if you're losing details in the back that you want, you can increase this number. But I found that this default around 5.58 is just fine. The only other thing you might want to do if it's not done when you load the workflow is if your original video has audio on it that you want to transfer to the finished product, you want to connect this audio node here to the audio node here. Now the default node here is in Chinese. If you'd like, you can just replace this node with the VHS combined node that is in English and you'll see that that says audio and it works just the same. I'm going to show you a few examples I've run. I'm going to show you the original video and then some of the styles that were generated. But before I do that, I do want to pop over and show you the tile workflow because as I'm showing you these examples of what I generated with the depth, then I'm going to show you what happened when I added the detail using this process. So as I record this, they're making an addition to this particular workflow that I'm about to show you. So if it's not there, you can easily do it. If you look on the tile between the resize image node and the WAN video encode, you can place this image blur node. This is going to help you with the quality of the detail that's added. If you don't do that, you're going to get some weird effects and you're not going to like it. So all you have to do to add that node is double click. You can just do a search for image blur, just hit return, it'll be right there and just connect the nodes in between. And then the values I use are 10 as a starting point, anywhere between 10 and 15. And the sigma I have always just left at 0.3 because I don't know any better. But you will want to do that or you will not be happy with the results. But it works very similarly. You place the video that you want to add detail to and or upscale in here. 
Then you determine what size video do you want this to be. Let's say this was a smaller video, like 480 by, I don't know, two something, and I wanted it to be bigger. I could type in 832 by 480. It will then upscale this image, and during this tiling process, it's going to add all the detail back into it that it's lost by upscaling. For example, this was the original image that I put into this particular workflow, and then this is the output. So you can see, I can make this a little bit bigger, but you can see that the original output had very little detail around the face, but by running it through this tile process, we added a lot more detail. It looks so much better. Let me show you a few examples, and not all of them have been upscaled with the detail, but many of them have. This was the first one I did, so I just grabbed a video that I had handy. It's one that I animated of me, a picture of me when I was in sixth grade. The prompt I gave it was a photorealistic aquatic alien with a fish-like face, scales, highly detailed realistic texture, is underwater with sea life swimming all around. So there wasn't a lot of movement to see in that depth map. Still, for a first attempt, I thought, wow, this is pretty cool how this works. Let's keep playing with it. Here was the original video, and the prompt was, a child's doll wearing blue and purple dress is walking down a road in a Lego town. So did a pretty good job. She's not walking because she's not walking in the original video. I was thinking that she had when I typed that prompt, but all the rest of the style and the following of the movement it nailed. Here the prompt was, an old black man dressed in a suit is standing on a city street corner. Now this one I ran through the tile workflow and got this upscaled version. You can see sharper details around the lettering here and in the face. I modified the prompt a little bit. An old black man dressed in a blue and purple tuxedo, dreadlocks, is standing on a city street corner. So no more walking instruction. So I love that. Ran it through the tiler and got this upscaled version. Here's one that I didn't do the depth process to. I already had this video from another project, and I had this face here without a lot of detail and ran it through the tiler. This was an early test, but it definitely added more details to the face here. Here's the original video that this was based on. Now keep in mind, this is the full 10 second video and we're only seeing a few seconds of it. So what was transferred was the first few seconds of this video. But the prompt was, an elderly woman with gray hair is wearing a pink velvet warm up suit at the beach and dancing. This by the way is the version that I already tiled up. And this is the original lower resolution one that was the output of the original depth workflow. This one the prompt was, a female themed robot is rusty and old with a steampunk vibe. She's dancing in an old rundown steampunk bar as other small robots watch her. And there's the small robots back there watching her, and she's following the movement of the original video. This one I did not run through the tile upscale and already has great detail. Still working off the same video, a gorgeous young supermodel girl, 17 years old, long bouncy blonde hair, dressed in a blue silk shirt and white shorts, dancing in the mall. So although we have some not quite human activity going on with the arm, and I did not tile this one up either. I imagine you're beginning to see the potential here. Then there's this gal. For this one, I took a similar approach to the one I did to open up this video. I had this video done already. I grabbed an image from the first frame of the video, and once again, I did an image to image transfer. I brought it into open art in this case, a Disney style farm girl with braids and a happy smile, vibrant colors and sunny, and it had and so I just chose any one of these images, brought it in here to chat, had it describe the image, used this description in the workflow here in the depth workflow, and got this as the original output. And then I ran it through the tile to get a little bit bigger. I think I could probably adjust the blur settings and get this a little bit sharper, but it did a great job of transferring the style and the movement. These kind of tools are opening up more and more creative options for people just getting started in filmmaking who are willing to put in just a little bit of work to understand how this process works and how they can save a ton of money by just running these applications themselves either on their own computer or on a system like Mimic PC that can house these GPUs that maybe they can't afford and start cranking out this content without having to worry about spending thousands of dollars on a GPU. If this is the type of solution you like to learn about, well, why not subscribe to this channel? Because it's the kind of stuff we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...